You wanted to know what a bad day was like with me? Here it is. Yeah. Let's get started. <laughs> hey guys, you know what time it is. It is time for Justice is Served. And today, I am serving up a helping of girl. I am like super red because I'm like, I've been frustrated all day. And let's just open a Diet Coke for the flavor, not because I need it. All right. Let's dive into it because I want us to be realistic and <sighs> I will tell you, I want you to, to listen to something for a minute. I'm going to put up a clip, actually three of them, for you to experience what I experienced all day today. However, it's also been going on for a few weeks now. And let me just set the tone for you real quick because... You may not know this, obviously, because you don't live over here where we are at. You don't live next to me, so you wouldn't know. But the townhouse that's right next to us actually sold. And we were super excited to have some great new neighbors and were pumped up about it. And the first encounter with them was not very warm whatsoever. And, you know, the only thing they were worried about was some box that was supposed to be delivered. And we were heading to the pool and um, they said hey, did you see a box that was delivered? And I said, no, we didn't see anything. Um, I said, usually, I said, did you check the, um, I said, they usually leave it at the front, but did you happen to check the mailbox just in case they put it in the lockbox? And he's like, no. And it's a, a guy and his wife. And he said, we checked over there. It's not there. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I'm not sure. I said, so far we haven't had any theft here. So you should be good. Um, maybe they just like said they left it but didn't or left it at a different door or um, somewhere else by accident and they'll get it and bring it back over here. I said, this happened where they put something over here that wasn't ours and we just left it on the porch and they ended up coming back and get it um, that afternoon because we like saw them grab it back and take it. Um, or they'll come in there multiple times because obviously sometimes they forget and they'll come back like three times to our area, which sucks, but it happens. And so we'll like flag them down and say, hey, here's a package that doesn't belong to us. And He's like, no, it was over 30 minutes ago. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, and then I said, by the way, <laughs> I'm Justice. This is my partner, Chris. Uh, we're your neighbors. <laughs> we own right next to you. And I said, I see that you're renovating. I said, that's awesome. The guy uh, that was selling it said that he uh, it needed some upgrades. So that's good. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're definitely doing it. We're, we're changing it up. And I said, okay. But he wasn't trying to hold a conversation. You could tell that he just didn't really want to talk to me. And my partner trying to blow it off of like, you know, maybe he's just stressed about the package and they really needed it. And um, maybe they just have other stuff going on. Well, I didn't have a good feeling to begin with. It was just very mysterious to me because I'm like, okay, but it's still your neighbor and it's the first time you're meeting them. So wouldn't you have a bit more personality and a bit more like warming and wel warm and welcoming to the person? So I was like, whatever, let me just brush it off. Well, then there's been numerous times where I've come back home over the past couple of weeks and their van is parked like behind their garage, which mine is right next to theirs, garage wise, garage and garage. Well, this is their garage door, they're parked here and it's over a little bit to where it's closer to mine. Well, I have to pull and it's the closest one to their driveway. I mean, to their um, uh, garage door. So mine is the closest to theirs. So like my door would open to the wall to their garage. Let's put it that way. So I have to like go around and then back up to try and get in and just know, I mean, there's not a ton of room in that because there's other townhouses right behind us that their garage faces ours. So of course I'm getting a little irritated with this and I'm like, whatever, you know, it is what it is. They're probably unloading stuff and it's probably just want to make sure they don't have to go further and walk around. I'm super lenient about these things and I'm very chill. But, um, you know, I'd come home and they have these workers come in a white van. And so the white van is parked in the no parking area, which is where our walkway is in the front of our building because there's only three townhouses together and we're facing the road. So literally they're parked like up against the walkway. You can't even walk on it. You have to walk into the grass to get it. And by I mean grass, there's this much space in grass, which is actually a shrub on the, between the metal piece right here that has got like the water valve and stuff. And then right here is the no parking yellow curb. So there's no room and I'm walking the two dogs and they're standing there and it's the workers, there's two of them. 
And so I'm coming to walk up and they clearly see me walk toward them. And so they don't even move. And then the van is so hugged up against the damn walkway that I'm like, I can barely even like get over here. And you're like blocking it. So literally I'm like, excuse me, can I please get through here? Like they looked at me, I said, excuse me first. And they just kind of like half-assed moved. And I was like, can you please move? Like you're blocking like how I need to get to my house. Like my house, like I can't go any other way. I have to go through here. So like, can you please move? You're not supposed to be parked here anyway. This is no parking. And again, this is not the first time they've parked there. So I've been leaving it alone. The other reason why it's an issue is because when you leave our complex of townhouses that you have to go around, like you're supposed to go here. And so they were parked here. So you're having to go around, which this is the entrance side of it. And there's not much room. And then you'd have to go back this way to get in front of it. Well, there was like not even enough room. There wasn't even a car length between the road and their, their van. So I'm like, girl, they are being so disrespectful. But I chalked it up to they're, they're, they were hired to come here to work. They're not really worried about, you know, what the rules were for HOA. They're not worried about the rest of the stuff. They don't care. They're, they're here to work. They're here to get paid and they're going home, you know, whatever. So I just kind of brush it off. Well, today was the day that like, literally I'm about to play the three little snips for you so that you can listen to the sound that we listen to all day. Just know it's Saturday. Okay. I haven't had a Saturday off in like three or four weeks and I'm not complaining about it because I love what I do, but I'm complaining that the day that I finally get it off because I'm supposed to be off on Saturdays and Sundays. That's my, my day off. I'm salary. So that's my day off. So when I finally take my day off, I'm listening from nine o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. This noise right here. As you can see, it's quite loud, very loud. We have two chihuahuas that, you know, obviously we rescue them. They're already nervous animals anyway. And we think that they were abused before we got them. There's no way to tell, we don't know. And the thing is, is that noise had them on edge all day, but it hasn't been just today. This has been going on. now. It wasn't as loud as it was today um, for the previous days because they were doing tile work. So the tile work sounded um, almost like the noise when they make, like when they cut a key um, in Home Depot or Lowe's. That's the noise that it was making before, but today was that, that, I mean, it was so loud. And it was continuous. Like it wasn't like they would like take about three hours and then start again. Like it was continuous all day long to the point where our neighbor on the other side of us called me and said, are y'all doing construction? And I was like, no, why? And she literally was like, do you not hear this noise? It was the noise that we were hearing too, but it sounded just as loud in her um, townhouse as it was in ours. 
and to put it into perspective, here's the people doing their building, like on like closest to the entrance, then our townhouse, and then her townhouse. Like ridiculous. I mean, I cannot. And the thing is, is we have not been told about like, hey, like we're gonna do construction. Like, do you guys work from home? Um, we wanna make sure we're not being disruptive. Like when is like the best time that I could get these guys out here to do it to where we're not also putting you in a bind. And to be honest with you, we're super flexible. I'll be like, I really don't care. Like Monday is my office day. I have to have conference calls. I have to do um, a ton of different things where I'm on the phone. So I can't keep muting if you're gonna be loud. So like that would be one time that I'd be like, you know, I really need like if you can be flexible with that one. But then Saturdays and Sundays are like, if we're supposed to be off, we're supposed to be off. And my thing is, I know that if you are like, if we can hear it that loud and then my neighbor can hear it that loud, then that means the people across the, like when you uh, first pull into the complex, I know they had to hear it. There's no way. It was so loud. So tonight when they go walking out, like we, I'm, we're walking the girls, the dogs. And I'm like, question, did the owner ask you to stay until 10 o'clock tonight? Because I want to know, because I mean, it really does show like if there's a blatant disrespect or if they're just trying to finish a job. So he said, no, we had, we were just trying to finish the job because we have another job to do. And I said, oh, well, again, I said, this isn't on you. I said, I, I said, honestly, I don't really know who it's on. I said, it's, you should not be working until 10 o'clock at night, making drilling noises. And I'm not talking about drilling in a wall. I'm talking about drilling on pipes, drilling on all kinds of things where it is so loud. I mean, you heard it. I don't even know what they're drilling on at that point, but it was so loud. And I said, you cannot do that. That is so disrespectful. And I said, I, this is my first Saturday off in three weeks. And I said, and I had to sit here and listen to this until 10 o'clock at night. I said, that is so disrespectful. So disrespectful. And I said, I, I said, I'm not blaming you. I said, you were hired to do a job. I said, but the thing is, is you're telling me that you stayed late to get the job done so that you didn't have to come back. But are you here tomorrow? And he goes, probably. And I said, okay, absolutely not. Tomorrow is Sunday. I said, and no, I said, and if you do come back over here, I said, you can let the owner know this. We're going to call and complain and we're going to talk to the HOA. I said, because the thing is, is I'm not going to sit here on my days off and have to listen to this to the point where I can't even hear my TV. And the television was up pretty loud. So like, I'm not going to sit here and have my off days listening to this shit. Like you're being disrespectful. And I said, and you can call the owner of the home. I really don't care. I said, it's not up to you. You were hired to do a job. You did your job. But what you need to understand is you being hired to do your job is you should have worked faster or gotten your time done wisely so that you weren't here until 10 o'clock at night. Because you as a person being hired should know it is disrespectful to be doing any work past seven o'clock. People are coming home. They have families. They are trying to relax. They're trying to unwind from work. And we have to listen to that shit until 10 o'clock at night? Seriously? And again, the owner never once came and introduced himself to any of us, neither one of us, my neighbor or myself or my partner, Chris, never once, and except for the time he wanted to stop and ask about the package. So again, you don't, you, you personally don't really give a shit if we are, are, if you're a good neighbor to us or not. You don't care if we're inconvenienced. You don't care if we're happy with what you're doing because you're just worried about getting your house done. Well, I understand that you want to get your house done, but guess what? You as a home buyer, if you didn't have enough time to get it done before your lease is done in your apartment that you're at to get in here and have it done before you get there, then that's on you. Then you live through it. You live in there when it's convenient for everyone for you to just sit in your house, in your townhouse and deal with it because you are the one choosing to have it upgraded. And I get it. And it's not going to be comfortable for you. But right now, this homeowner doesn't even live there right now. They live across the street at the apartments. So this homeowner is literally putting everybody else in an inconvenience and they're not even there to have to even deal with it. So I'm like, that's fine, girl. HO, I got an email. The other part is, girl, <laughs> McDonald's. Okay, let's talk about Uber Eats. Okay, and I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to be very direct. I used to be a server. Okay, I, I, I am somebody that uh, I take customer service very seriously. And it was so frustrating that, you know, with Uber Eats, you have to pay the delivery fee. Then you also, if you want to have priority, meaning they deliver your food first so that it way it's hotter when you get it, then you pay an extra $2, okay? And then you tip on top of that. Plus, they always do more pricing, like the prices are higher on Uber Eats than in, if you were to drive to McDonald's, okay? Girl, I know, look at me, I know some people are gonna be like, girl, you don't need to be in McDonald's. Girl, I really could care less, okay, honey? I'm fluffy, I'm a McFluffy McFlurry, okay? <laughs> But 
what I need you to understand is we we got this and the person literally takes me takes the picture from the Uber Eats because they show when they leave it. And this person was not even in our complex, left it at somebody else's door that was number four. We're number 34. And I call, like it says done, it's ready to go. Go pick it up. I walk outside, I'm like, okay, well one, I knew the picture wasn't here, but I was like, maybe it was something weird. Girl, I call this person. She can barely even understand what the hell I'm saying. And I'm like, girl, I said, honey, the food is not at my house. She goes, no, I dropped it off. I said, I understand you dropped it off, Shugs, but you dropped it off, not at my house. And I said it again, you know, McDonald's fries, girl, if anybody in here eats McDonald's fries, you know they got about five hot minutes after they get out of that grease. You better eat them or they are gone. They are dead. So, <laughs> they literally, I said, you did not drop it off at my house. She goes, I dropped it off at 34. I said, no, your picture clearly shows apartment four. And she's like, oh my gosh, let me go grab it. And I said, thank you. Like, I, I mean, I appreciate it. I understand there's mistakes. Again, I am super lenient about things. But, again... When you don't pay attention to the instructions and you just leave things, like she just left it there and then took a picture and left. Well, girl, it clearly says 34, not four. You're missing a three, Suge. Like you're missing it. Like I don't know where what three you saw, but just because this door says a three and this door says a four does not mean that that is 34. <laughs> math, okay? That's not math. That ain't mathesis, okay? So, the thing that really bothers me is then I tell her my address because obviously she's completed the, the delivery, completed the delivery, so it doesn't show her the information anymore. So, I had to tell her the stuff, and I don't know how many times I had to say the first four numbers of my damn uh, address. She wouldn't listen. She would not listen. And I said, can you please stop talking and listen to what I'm trying to tell you? I'm, you keep saying, uh oh, is it this? Is it? And I said, you are not even listening to me to type it in. So, can you please stop? Take a breath. Because you're you're wasting time at this point, okay? I'm trying to tell you my address and you keep talking over me when I'm trying to help you out. Like, I'm trying to help you out, okay? And then she finally gets it, misses the turn, goes somewhere else, then turns back around, comes in, and I told her we are the first building on the left. As soon as you turn in, we're facing the road. Like, we literally can touch the road. She said, okay. What does she do? Pulls in and goes all the way to the very back of the complex. I was like, Seriously? And I'm on the phone with her. Like, I'm on the phone with her. So I walk outside and she goes, oh, I think I missed it. I said, seriously? Can you please, like, we're in the front. I, I, I explained to you like six times that I'm in the front. We're literally facing the road. It's the first building on the left. She gets out of the car, she hands it to me. She goes, oh, sorry. And turns around and walks off. And I said, well, yeah, I'm a little confused considering that the first person that said they were taking my order and bringing it here was a guy. And then somehow or another, you're the person that shows up and it's a different picture and a different driver. I'm confused. Like, I'm so confused. And so I get it. And of course, McDonald's, being the smart company that they are, puts a cold drink in the hot food in the exact same bag. So what do you think happened? Everything because of how long it took for her to get here and, and because the cold drink being in with the food, everything was ice cold. Ice cold. And I was so mad because, again, I am very lenient about things. But the thing I do not like is when you cannot fulfill service. And it's not because you are not able to. It's because you don't slow down and pay attention. It's not important to you to give great service. It's not important to you to make sure that you are delivering what is being asked and expected of you. But, again, you are going to give me a discount. You weren't going to take off the delivery fees. I still was expected to tip you. So what did I do? Girl, you can call me Karen, girl. You can call me Karen all day long. I took my food and I threw it right in the trash because it was absolutely disgusting at that point. And I'm not talking like even lukewarm. It was cold. Threw it in the garbage. And I got my car and I drove my little happy tail up to McDonald's myself. And I had on the way, I texted the Uber or went on Uber help or whatever and sent a message. And I said, here's what happened. My food is absolutely disgusting. I threw it in the garbage before I left my house. I am now on my way to McDonald's to get my own food since the driver seems to be struggling. And I don't want to wait another 30 minutes for another driver to get it together. That's very understandable, right? I'm taking it off your plate. I just want my money back and we're going to be done with it. Move on about our day. Find the silver lining, honey. And the silver lining was fresh hot fries 
And the burger that I ordered sitting in the parking lot and eating it while it's still hot, I was fine. You know what? I was mad as hell and was ready to throw my fries like, like across the room. I was so ready for it because at this point, the noise has been going on all day. It's my only day off to get stuff done. And like, I'm just trying to like relax for a minute. And literally that's all I hear is that noise. And then you've got um, McDonald's with this like BS. And I'm like, girl, seriously? Like seriously. And of course, when I'm off, I can't not pick up my phone, like work phone, because I'm literally answering stuff, like answering emails and whatnot. So I'm not technically off. I'm still working when I'm off, okay? But I, I, I tell them that I'm there and, he's, and this person says, hi, to be able to issue a refund, we need a picture of the food so we can see the quality issue. I said, you can tell a temperature from a picture. I'm a little confused, Julius. I said, I just stated to you in my first message to you before you responded that I am already on my way to McDonald's, meaning I'm in the car at this point. And that I already threw my food away at home, which is not in my car because I'm in it on the way to McDonald's. Then I say, let me help you out and take a picture of me sitting in McDonald's drive through and send it to him. And I said, I expect my money back. I expect my delivery fee back. And I've already canceled the tip to your driver. I'm sorry. You can't do your job. We're not going to do this. I, I mean, I don't get a paycheck if I don't do my job. So I was like, no, ma'am, not going to do it. And I'm not a person that normally is like, I'm just not going to tip even if it's bad service. Because again, that's how they live. But for Uber drivers, girl, you pick up the food, you drop the food off. There's nothing in between. You are not cooking it. You're not refilling anything for me. You're not doing anything. And I'm tipping you the same amount as if I went and sat down in your table in a restaurant. Today was the day that I was like, nope, not doing it. Absolutely not. You couldn't get it together. My food is absolutely disgusting. And now I'm having to get in my car and drive to McDonald's, which is about 15 minutes away, which isn't crazy. But at the end of the day, if I already paid for it to be delivered to me and it's disgusting, and then I'm having to go there, plus the prices are inflated, Plus, you didn't understand anything that I was talking about when I was trying to help you out and trying to get you to my place quicker. But again, ta-da! People don't want to listen. They act like they know everything. So, woo! Um, so, what I do, I send a picture of that. And then I said, to help you out even further, because um, not giving me my money back is not an option. Um, because at the end of the day, it's like they can say no, but there's somebody above them. And at the end of the day, they have to answer to somebody. And girl, I will, I'm, I'm thick, but I can climb that ladder to get what I need to get. Um... And this is very Karen, but I then took my receipt of what I just paid again to show him because it had the date and the time to show him that right this second, I just paid for my food again because I had to leave my house to go get it versus what your driver messed up on and you're trying to give me pushback. Do you want to know what the response was? There's a, the response was, we're going to give you a refund as a courtesy because we usually have to have a picture of the food to give you a refund. But this time only, I will refund it as a courtesy, but going forward, you will have to, uh, to provide a picture. And hey, I get it, I'm realistic, I understand that people can scam Uber and act like they didn't get their food and then they have it over here eating it girl and trying to get a, you know, more money or a refund or more food, whatever it may be, I get it. They don't know me as a person. They don't know if how genuine I am or anything like that. Like, I get it. I understand the big picture of it. But I'm like, I literally, you can, like, you can see that I called your driver from your app after it had said it's been delivered. And you can track her car because as Uber, you can track them. You can see where she went the entire time. I don't get it. So I was like, no ma'am, ain't gonna happen. So they're gonna, they're like the refunds on here, whatever. I was so, this close to being so petty to come to the house and open the garbage can and take a picture of the food and say, here's your, your courtesy. So he then asked me to, to review the restaurant and the driver. So I made sure in that review, I listed everything I just told y'all in the story. But at the end, I also said, and the person at the help desk said as a courtesy, they would give me this without a picture this one time even though everything is laid out in black and white for them. Girl, I was fuming. <laughs> I was 
so mad. So here's what we're gonna do right now. And y'all wanna know how I deal with a bad day and you cannot have an amazing tomorrow until you fix your mindset today. Here's what we're gonna do. Take a sip. Okay. Girl, it ain't that deep. <laughs> It is not that deep, okay? The, the the big picture of this is it's done. There's no controlling it. The HOA is gonna deal with the neighbor. It's not for me to have to worry about. I will literally just report it, do what I need to do, do the correct procedures of making sure that these people understand. Do I think the neighbors are bad people? No, I don't. I do feel that they are very oblivious to other people's um, life and they're oblivious to actually being um, decent human being in the sense of what common sense is to your neighbors, especially when you share a wall with them. And again, I don't think they're doing it to be malicious by any means. Let's get real. I don't think they're like, let's show them in this thing and blah, 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 and make them hate us before they even, we even move in. I don't think it's anything like that. I think what it really comes down to is they're trying to get this thing done so they can move out of their apartment to get into a house they just spent a ton of money on. I get it. We just did this four months ago. Like, we did it. We were in an apartment. We paid for this. We got it done, but we didn't have to do the renovation. And I get it, but they have to understand that your actions now is going to have a ripple effect, effect later. I don't hold grudges. I mean, I, I can tell you, like, for me... I may not talk to people, but that doesn't mean that I'm holding a grudge. I'm just like, I, you feel a vibe and you just stay away from the bad vibe. You know what I mean? And so for me, we don't know their vibe yet. They're not here. Again, they're not here. They may not even know that the people stayed until 10 o'clock tonight. They're going to find out from the HOA because, I mean, we were fuming. But again, it's not because we want to get them in trouble. We just need them to be aware of how you're treating other people. And you're, you're not treating us with respect. But if it was the other way around, you would be livid if we were doing this to you. You know what I mean? So again, it's done. Like literally I'm making this video right after I walked in from taking the girls out and that's why my face was so red. I was so frustrated. But again, I don't think they're bad people. I just think that they just are oblivious of how to be respectful to people. And that's something that I don't think that they learn. You don't, you don't learn these things because the thing is that it's natural. And if you don't do it naturally, then that means that you have to keep reminding yourself to do it. But either way, it's got to be done because we all have to live here. We all we all bought our places. So, I mean, we live here. We're, we're, we should be a community in our own community. You know what I mean? The other part is about the whole Uber situation. I understand not everybody in Uber delivers that way. We order Uber Eats a lot. I'm not going to lie. We order Uber Eats a lot. I mean, look at me, girl. Do you think I cook? Um, <laughs> but the other part I need for you guys to understand is that Uber Eats, I tip, you know, $5 just about every single time it's an order, no matter what the order cost. Because again, we're not in the restaurant. We're not, they're not refilling our, our drinks. They're not, you know, getting the sauces and like, they're not waiting on us. They're like nonstop waiting on us in the sense of like, if we were there, you're going and getting my food and then you're bringing and dropping it off. And I try and make it extremely low maintenance as possible. I literally just say, leave it at the front door and knock and you're done. Like just nothing else to it. Nothing crazy. I don't, nothing. I mean, we're just super low maintenance. And if there's something I can type in for the store to actually do versus the Uber driver having to actually do it, then I do that. So I'm, I'm super low maintenance about those things. Even I've had some really bad drivers that struggled, but it, you could tell it was because they didn't understand where it was, or maybe they missed the turn by accident and and things like that, but not blatantly leaving, like not blatantly, but not by leaving my food and then taking so long to get it done. And then you are so dead set on trying to be the one controlling the situation that you're not even listening for me to give you an address. And even when it comes to there, you're not even apologetic in the sense of like actually sincerely sorry for it. You're just sorry that like you're now probably going to get reported for something. And then Uber, people that sit behind the desk and they're literally answering the, the emails. I get it. Like you, you probably have so much in your scope that you're told and trained to do. But what you have to understand is customers are not always right for one, but customers should be valued. And if somebody's reaching out to you in frustration, just know that it's already a sensitive topic anyway. And it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And 
And if you, it, instead of saying it's a courtesy, we're going to do this, you could say, I completely understand. I'm so sorry for the situation. I'm going to go ahead and refund you this time. If you can help me out next time and just take a picture before you leave, I would greatly appreciate it. Like these easy things, like make it easy. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. I mean, come on, girl. Like we're not, we're, we all have feelings and we're all just trying to get through the day. And by get through the day, I mean, like, for me, I'm just trying to live in every moment and have a great time. And I was off today and I was so excited and so pumped about it. And it literally was just being shit on by the whole thing next door. And I don't know if you notice this, but when there's so much chaos going on consistently, it's like everything just keeps building up and there's more going on, more going on. Because you're already agitated. But, again, we're done. Everything else was amazing. My partner and I, Chris, uh, we, we went to... Uh, my partner Chris and I, let me say it correctly. I try and correct myself when I'm speaking incorrectly. So, <laughs> it happens a lot. Um, the thing is, is we went to, it gave us an opportunity to go to dinner and uh, we had some amazing food and we had a cocktail and uh, we came home, we walked the girls to get them out of the house so they're not having to listen to the that noise anymore. And um, now I'm out here and I'm talking with you and you know, I mean, it really was, at the end of the day, still a great day. All this other stuff is done. The Uber situation's done. There's nothing else going forward with it. There's nothing else that's going to affect the rest of my day. The They're done with the construction tonight at 10 o'clock. It's done. There's no more noise going on. It's silent. It's done. The, and it's not going to dictate tomorrow either. Tomorrow is going to be amazing because guess what? Right this second, I'm already changing my mindset. It's already going to be freaking amazing. It's quiet, just in time for me to be able to get on here and make a video with you. And I wanted to show you how I am, like, it's, it's just a person. And how I am, you know, even on a shitty day. I mean, it's not, like, we get frustrated, we get mad, but it, it, it doesn't stay. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. It really is not that big of a deal. And when I tell you, like, it feels so good that it was finished in time for me to sit down and be able to have my video and record it in peace and, you know, be vulnerable with you and show you that even though I tell you guys all this fabulous words of affirmation, again, I told you this in the past and I'm going to tell you again now, I sometimes tell you because I'm trying to remind myself, we're not, nobody's perfect and we're going to have bad days, but it's about how long are you holding on to that, that bad day. And the thing is, the day's not even done, girl. It's not even midnight yet. I still got a little bit of time, honey. So I'm about to get off here, edit my video, post it for it to drop tomorrow or well, today at five o'clock <laughs> and enjoy the rest of my night. Have a glass of wine, maybe play some video games on the PS5, read comments on my videos before. But I mean, it's, it's not situations that define you. It's how you react and how you pick yourself up from situations that define you. And we're not going to stay down. When it, in the big, big picture of things today, did any of this stuff really actually affect me? <laughs> did it stop me from doing anything? Like, no, it didn't. So, I mean, honestly, the whole Uber Eats situation got me off the couch and got my fat ass in the car to go get my own McDonald's. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> so, you know what? Again, I wanted to come on and show you what it is like for me to have a bad day. And today wasn't even bad. It's just, today was just a challenging day. And how do I deal with it? And I deal with it by just letting it go, girl. Just chill out. It is not that deep. Uh, I am so pumped at all the comments. I loved your interaction with me on the comment section for my video talking about the scary movies and it was so funny to see how many of you fabulous divas love Beetlejuice as much as I do. It is so uh, cool to see that, you know, somebody said this, and it's so funny because I now use this in just everything. They were talking about people that hate and discriminate against people. Okay, and this is going to get kind of deep for about five seconds, and then we're going to get it back to the, the ray of sunshine, girl. <laughs> They were talking about people that hate, you know, the LGBTQ plus community, people that hate people of another race, that people that hate people of another culture, people, people that hate in general. The reason why they hate is because we have a community out of love and they have a community out of hate. And without the hate, where would they fit in to society? Where would they fit in in life? 
And I was like, dang, I never thought about that. Because we have Pride, we have, you know, Black History Month, we have so many different things that unify us that we get to celebrate. And and the thing is, is I'm glad that we're finally getting to a point where it's no longer needs to be a month. It needs to be every day. It doesn't need to be a day. It needs to be every day. And again, the more that we're getting to this realization that it no longer needs to be Black History Month. It needs to be Black History every day. It needs to be LGBTQ plus every day. It needs to be anything that you're a person of any every day. Stop celebrating it only during a certain time frame. We have so much to celebrate. Why are we, we restricting it to such a small amount of time? But love is what actually created these holidays or these time frames to celebrate because we're doing it out of love and we're doing it out of respect. And imagine if these people don't have that hate to hate anymore. Well, then what community do they belong to? And for them, they feel like they don't belong to any community unless they're in that community of hate. And so I thought it was so weird and so interesting that this person said that. And I said, you know what? That is so crazy. Like I genuinely, like it made a light bulb go off in my head and I'm like, wow. But with that being said, <laughs> going on the lighter part of the day um, <laughs> or of the conversation, do you realize how many people love certain type of movies and those people tend to gravitate towards each other because it's fun and it's something in common that we have and we get joy from it like talking about Beetlejuice me doing that opening scene but I, I mean tell you I didn't have the movie playing I didn't have anything going on I did it from memory and how many of you were so excited to see that is it's we are the Beetlejuice family girl or we are the Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion we are the scary movie family. We are the, you know, we are family in general. And I don't care what the positivity is or the love is that gets us to be together as long as we're together. And I really hope, and that's what I really am trying to do with my channel, is to really focus on how to get love. If I have to be the nucleus to get at least you know, a handful of people to feel like they belong somewhere and feel like they're in a family, then I've done what I'm supposed to do. I really, really appreciate your support and I really appreciate all of the commenting and you can tell that you, you really love coming to my channel and actually experiencing the day with me. Sorry, I'm trying not to cry. Um, <laughs> I, and I never realized how much impact I could have on people. I do when I'm in person because I am a very strong personality and I try and be very understanding and very direct out of respect because I respect people and you deserve to know what it takes to get you to be better for you, whether it be, you know, just the way that something's being delivered, again, verbiage, or if it's, um, you know, maybe you're doing something you don't realize it. And the thing is, is like myself, I always self-assess, but I have had some great leaders that have said, you know, I mean, I, I won't lie. There was a point uh, in my career where I was getting extremely frustrated that I didn't feel appreciated. And I, I was always like, I don't understand. Like, I just don't feel appreciated. And, and I just don't know. Like, I just don't know if I even want to be here. And what ended up happening is this person said, well, what is it that they're not doing that you would like for them to do to show appreciation? And I said, I don't know. I have no idea. And I realized, girl, if you can't pinpoint what's missing, then it's not missing. You're just so like overthinking things and thinking you're not being appreciated when you actually are. And you have an expectation that you don't even know how to meet. So how would they meet it? If you can't vocalize it, how do they know to do it? So I was like, you know what? This is something that I really took to heart. And this was many, many, many years ago. And I really appreciated this manager actually being able to step back and have this conversation with me. And I've used it every single day since. And that's what I'm really trying to do on here. I don't have an opportunity to tell you directly in a conversation um, about things to help better your life in the sense of what you're doing today. But what I can help you do is understand that you need to step back and take a breath. And sometimes reacting is not what needs to happen. Sometimes you really need to take a breath and see, 
did you get all the facts? And is what you're about to say, what is the end result that you're expecting before you even say it? So with that being said, I hope that my channel is gonna grow so big that so many people feel like they're part of the Taylor Tot family. And I appreciate all of you that are already on here that are watching my videos every day, that are commenting, that are supporting me in any way. And I appreciate you going and getting my merch. Um, I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's something that I had because again, I like my name on stuff. <laughs> Love my name on things. But I understand what it's like to want to have something to remind you to remind you of the saying that I say of you cannot have an amazing tomorrow until you fix your mindset today. For me, my merch, my bags, my names on things is what reminds me and your comments. I mean, when I tell you your comments is what reminds me to keep pushing to better myself every single day. And my career going in and seeing my teams be successful because of their passion and actually having it go for their passion instead of trying to change them into something different is so rewarding because again, we are all so talented in many different ways. And sometimes we have to stop trying to push people into management roles or into something different just to try and make them more successful when really they're already successful in what they're doing. Let's just really enhance and elevate what they're already doing now because the talent is already there. Why are you trying to change them? Just amplify that talent. Just get that talent and make it, you know, 3,000 3, times bigger. You never know where it might go for them. But again, it's it's fun to to be able to do that because again, there's so much talent in this world and everybody is important and everybody is needed in this world to make the world go round. And sometimes it just takes somebody to tell you, girl, sit your ass down, think about it before you say something and chill out. And then sometimes you just need to find that friend that's going to say, girl, what are they not doing that you need them to do? And if you can't answer that, then it's you that's the problem. <laughs> But you know what? World peace. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to hear it, girl, but it's it's fabulous to hear. But again, thank you for joining me and thank you for constantly uh, being involved in my videos. Thank you for sharing and buying merch and, and making me feel so welcomed into your home. Um, I know I can't see it, but I do feel the warmth and the love uh, from you and your home. So I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. Please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure that you're sharing this to somebody else. We want to, to share the positivity, girl. Let's change the bad days into amazing days. And guess what? I got an hour and a half until it's done. So let's go make it even more amazing, girl. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I love you guys so much. Enjoy your evening and say justice is served. Mwah!